Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I got a special guest with me on today. This is Paige Melody Lockett. God's been doing some extraordinary things around here. I just want to introduce you to my family. My wife's not here right now. She's recording right next door, but I'm going to bring her on in the soon future. But we had a dynamic service today. We talked from the subject title, It's Complicated. We're talking about relationships. We realize what makes relationships complicated is the heart. And so we talked from the subtitle, Soak in the Solution. It was a crazy uh, revelation that God had given me that sometimes we soak in our problems, we soak in our fears, we soak, soak in our hardships, but God wants us to soak in a solution. The Bible says if we meditate on his word, both day and night will be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. As you can see, my daughter is helping me to preach this message. She just ripped off my mic. She's going to be a preacher, a singer, all the above. But I want to encourage you to go check out the message. Make sure you also join Evangel Nation. That helps us to stay connected and helps us to build a relationship. This is still the year of connection. We are connected with God, others, and purpose, and we want you to be a part. So check out the service that's already in progress, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Peace, good afternoon, good morning, good night. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. You ready for the word? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. We're going to try to cut some corners on today. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It reads, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. I like one translation that says, it determines the quality of your life. Guard your heart above all things, for it determines the quality of your life. I love this passage of scripture because Proverbs is penned by Solomon. And it's a father and son interacting. This means uh, that just because we're talking about heart on today, the men shouldn't turn me off. Because this is a father-son conversation. We're beginning this series called It's Complicated. And he's talking to his son. And he's telling him to guard your heart. Jeremiah reminds us that the unregenerated heart is complicated. He says, deceitful, who can know it? You know, the reason we call it complicated is because many times it's difficult to analyze. You know, one of my favorite movies, the whole wide world, is The Wizard of Oz. Anybody watch The Wizard of Oz? It's one of my favorite movies in the entire world. This tin man, he had oil, he had armor, but he was heartless. That means you can have armor without having a more. <laughs> you like that? You, you know, we, we evangel worldwide, so I have to be all things to all men that we might win some. But he had armor without a more. You have to understand this, that even 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about this church that's very gifted, but they lack love. That means you can have great ability, but lack heart. And sometimes in church, we ask the question, how can you be so heartless? So gifted, but so heartless. So anointed, but so heartless. When we look at David, the reason David... It's selected is because David is a man after God's own heart. And so there is an unregenerated heart, and then there is a regenerated heart. And the thing I love about the heart is that when you even look at the heart, the heart is designed, and the heart comes into existence before the brain. The heart develops before the brain. This is why you can measure a heartbeat when a baby is being developed because the heart develops before the brain. Even though we give a lot of credit to the brain, there's no life without a heart. And the heart informs the brain just as much as the brain informs the heart. 
And in fact, there have been heart transplants. I'm going to talk about it next week, that when people had a heart transplant, they took on the very nature of the heart that they received because it's something about the heart that stores memory. In fact, the Bible considers the heart to be the control center. The heart is what controls you. The heart is what dictates you. This is what the text says. It says, out of it flows the issues of life. And this is what you got to understand. You got to be careful of what data you allow to get into your heart because your data will determine your decisions. I know what some of you are upset with me. You're saying, Pastor, I thought we came to talk about relationships. You have to understand that your biggest problem is not externally. Your, your biggest problem is internal. It's, it's dealing with your heart because it's two hearts that are connected. The reason you can't get over your ex is because he still has your heart. The reason you can't get over your ex is because she still has your heart. And God's trying to show us the power of a heart. You can't even have a great relationship and connect with God if you don't have a heart because it's a heart-to-heart -heart connection. And so I got to watch my data because my data determines my decisions. And I only can make decisions based upon my data, which suggests to me I could have a regenerated heart and still not have the right data to make the right decisions. This is why the psalmist says, um, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In other words, I've got some new data that's going to influence my decisions. The reason some of us are saved and still make the wrong decisions is because we don't have the data in our regenerated heart to make the right decisions. This is why a mind is truly a terrible thing to waste. This is why Paul encourages us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we might prove that perfect and acceptable will of God because I can't make new decisions with the same data. This is why it's so important to saturate yourself in the word of God because it gives you the ability to make different decisions because now you have different data. You would do better if you knew better. And then my decisions determine the quality of life. I want you to know that the Bible says that whatever is born of God overcomes the world. It's not just confined to a person, but it's whatever comes from God. The ungenerated heart. I love what Jesus says in John 16 and 33. He says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Your translation probably says take heart. I have overcome the world. In other words, he's saying this new regenerated heart has the ability to overcome because it has data. That the reason my heart is, can overcome is because Jesus has already overcome. And so because I have new data, I don't have to take fear. I can take heart. I don't have to lose my peace. I can take heart because I have new data. And your data is always going to influence your decisions. If you want to change your decisions, you got to check your data. Yeah. Yeah, so it seems to suggest to us that my heart is fixed if I'm a believer, if I'm a Christ follower. But my mind also has to be made up. That's what the songwriter says. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. But just because your heart is fixed does not mean it doesn't need to be guarded. Yeah. I said just because you have a new heart doesn't mean that you can escape the responsibility to guard it. I want to submit to you that your heart should regulate your circumstance and circumstances should not regulate your heart. The Bible says in the last day that men's hearts would fail them because of fear. But I believe if you have a regenerated heart, you shouldn't succumb to the same things that those outside of relationship succumb to because your heart has the ability to change the world. And so I can change my circumstances with my heart. You don't believe you can change your circumstances with your heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's the greatest love story ever told. Sometimes we're waiting for circumstances to change so our hearts can feel better. And God says, I'm waiting for your heart to change so you can change your circumstances for the better. And so 
The writer tells us that our heart should be secured. Everybody say secured. Secure. You know, we have ADT. We have all of this high tech technology that helps us to make sure our loved ones are safe. But the Bible says that the writer makes something very clear. He says that above all things, make this a priority. I know you love baby girl. I know you love your wife. I know you love your husband. I know you love your mother and I know you love your father. But it says, I got to make this a priority that above all things that I guard my heart. Because I can be safe physically and be dying on the inside. If I don't guard my heart, nobody's breaking into my house, but you got to understand this, that that's not the only house you have. Your body is a temple. Your body is a house. And if you don't guard your heart, you'll be paying ADT all this money when all you really need is G-O-D to keep your heart. I'm just saying, have both. But we have to prioritize what really matters. The reason you pay ADT is because it makes your heart feel better. It affords you peace because you know if it doesn't make you feel any safer, it's not worth it. So he says, above all things, guard your heart. And yeah, you can't keep a heart you don't know. You got to guard your heart. Above all things, this is a military term, which means you have to take it seriously. It says, guard your heart with diligence. Can I make a big statement for you? Yeah, yeah. You can control what enters your heart better than you can control what exits it. This is the principle here because Jesus makes it very clear. That out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So many people say things and say, I didn't mean it. Or it slipped. Did it really slip? It only can come out your heart if it was allowed in your heart. And this is why you have to guard what you allow in. Now, some of you have been to some clubs, some day parties and night parties. Keep looking at me so I won't think I'm talking to you. Very rarely do they have security when you exit. They're not checking your ID when you exit. Because they figured if you got in, you were supposed to be in there. They check and ask for ID upon entrance. Because you only can come out if we allowed you in. That's the same way it is with your heart. What comes out is something you allowed in. And your mouth really serves notice of what you always had in your heart. That's why when people show you who they truly are, you've got to believe them. This this is why it's so important, because our mouths give us an indication of what's truly in our heart. Yeah, so we have to check our heart, because you have more control of what you allow to enter than you have with what you allow to exit. You think the problem is what exited. But the problem is what you're allowed to enter. Yeah, so you have to be very careful because the enemy is after your heart. You know, someone said the crocodile hunter, he was fearless. He was one with the animals. He was a modern day Tarzan. But he dies because of a sting. From a stingray. And if you understand anything about stingrays, usually people recover from stingrays. But the reason the crocodile hunter dies is because he's stung in his heart. And when you're stung in your heart from a stingray, you die. This is why the enemy is after your heart. He's not after your possessions. He's not after your notoriety. He's after your heart. 
If he can get your heart, he'll get your praise. If he can get your heart, he can get your faith. Because your heart is your control center. This is where your belief system is embedded. And so he's after your heart. It really is a war on hearts. Who have your hearts? Jesus says, your lips are close to me, but your heart... It's far away because maybe he's after your heart. And I want to submit to you that you got a heart issue. And the enemy's trying to hit you where it counts in your heart. Resentment resides in your heart. Bitterness resides in your heart. All matter of uncleanness resides in your heart. That's why he's trying to hit you where it hurts. This is why some of you have problems and struggles getting out of the bed because of what hits your heart. This is why some of you have struggles getting into a new relationship because of what happened to your heart in the last season of your life. Something hit your heart. Church hurt is not church hurt unless it hits your heart. This is why it takes so long to recover because it hits your heart. The reason we cried at the funeral is because somebody left that was dear to our heart. Somebody broke our heart. You're really not getting to me until you get to my heart. See, the reason Delilah could get Samson's hair is because Delilah got his heart. I could preach right there. The reason you can't get any money from him if he has money is because you don't have his heart. Because if you get his heart, you can get his hand. I just had to pause for the calls, but y'all don't like that type of preaching, so I got to keep on moving. Yeah, because if you have the heart, you have everything attached to the heart. And watch this. We have to secure the heart. And I want to remind you of this, that a hard heart is not a guarded heart. A hard heart is not a guarded heart. They are not the same. But the Bible says that you're supposed to secure your heart. And who did you give your heart away to that you should have kept? Yeah. Because the heart is what counts. And then the heart must be soaked. The heart must be soaked, you know. Someone said a healed heart is like a sponge. It would absorb everything around it. A healed heart is like a sponge. A healed heart is like a sponge. Sponge, that's a heart. You have to start seeing your heart as a sponge, which means it absorbs. It does not just absorb what you desire for it to Absorb. It absorbs anything that's close to it. If you're around problems, your heart will absorb problems. If you're in a toxic environment, your heart will absorb the toxic environment. And this is why you got to be careful who you hang around. Because evil communication corrupts good behavior. Because my heart was made to absorb the environment. This is why Paul says this in him. We live, we move, and we have our being. Because my heart was designed to absorb my environment. And I can't control my heart, but sometimes I got to control my environment. So the truth of the matter is our heart is a sponge. There are some things you let in your heart because you didn't realize your heart was a sponge. There's some things that still impact you, influence you, because you didn't recognize your heart was a sponge. All the relationships, some of you still carry them because your heart is a sponge. And God gives you a new heart, but that doesn't mean your heart ceases to be a sponge. And so when I start seeing my heart as a sponge, I realize, again, the necessity of God in my heart. Because my heart was designed to... Absorb. And, and, and some of us, some of us, 
live like this. This is how we live. I'm protected. I'm shielded. These are sponges on the inside of it, but you think this is a protection mechanism. The only problem is nothing gets out and nothing gets in. So you think this is guarding your heart. But in this season, you got to guard your heart from the inside out. Let me try it again on this side. I said this season, you've got to guard your heart from the inside out, not the outside in. Right? Nothing gets to you anymore because now you have a hard heart instead of a healed heart. So you say, I'll never love again. Because you got a hard heart, not a healed heart. That's why I don't fool with church people anymore. I fool with Christ, but not church people. Because this is your protection mechanism because you don't want your heart to be hurt again. So you put yourself in isolation to keep yourself away from the damage. And it's working until you feel lonely. It's working until you feel rejected. It's working until you feel suicidal. Because it was never meant to be defended from the outside in. It was meant to be defended from the inside out. Jesus didn't live life like this. This is why he can call a disciple by the name of Judas. Allow him to betray him and still love us. Because he didn't live like this. He knew Judas was stealing money and still let him rock with him because he had an open and a healed heart. The question is, do you have a healed heart or do you have a whole heart or a hurt heart? Which one do you have? Because some of us don't know the difference. We think we're getting wise and the enemy said, I still got you. Still got you. You all by yourself. You're in isolation because man was never created to be alone. But because you've been hurt, this is the best way you know how to defend yourself. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. So you've got to get a different type of strategy. So how can I be safe and vulnerable at the same time? Yeah, because I know I can't trust everybody. I'm smart enough to know that. But how do I defend myself against the traps and the snares of the enemy? Some of you have been living like this for a long time. Your heart is intact, but your life is a lemon. That means it's sour, even though your heart is intact. I'm single, saved, and sassy and living like this. Some people will never get married because they want to live like this. Can I trust you with my heart? You don't know until you get into it. And because you don't want to take the chance, you will live like this for the rest of your life. But if your heart is closed like this, let me ask you a question. How can Jesus come in? Because he can only enter open hearts. Behold, I stand at the door and either he's going to have to enter in or he's going to have to walk through your wall and break you out. But we live like this. We live like this. This is how you can love ministry and hate people. Because it's a protection mechanism. Don't let them get too close. You know, the last person you let get close to you, you remember what happened? And now you make your new relationship pay for your past relationships. One thing I learned about when people join this church, they already come with the history. Their history does not begin when they get here. Their history began a long time ago. And some of them came with shields. Protection mechanisms. But, uh, yeah, you can't live like that. No, you can't, you can't live like that because you were designed to do more. 
You were designed to do more. And one thing you have to learn is that a sponge is designed to soak. Yeah, so it can, it can soak up water like this. You put it in water, it soaks it up. It soaks it up. Thank God for the word. That's a water. But see, what you got to understand is David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now watch this. Every word is not an appropriate word. This is why you have to learn how to rightly divide the word to get an appropriate word because it's like gold among silver when it's appropriate. So you can be in the word and be in the facility of the solution and yet not have put your hand or your heart on the solution. And so you got to soak because it's easy to soak in your problems. That's why some of you are depressed right now. You're soaking your problems. You're soaking your heartache. You're soaking your past. This is why Paul says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me and I'm pressing towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So you got to soak in your solution. Watch this. If I'm trying to clean a pan, I need some solution. I need some dishwashing liquid. I need a solution. And so this solution is so prophetic. When I start looking at solutions as washing dishes, I recognize that this is game. Uh, it's game. See, sometimes you're focused on what you lost. But you got to take no thought for what you lost. Because whatever I sowed in tears, I'm going to reap in joy. Y'all can't get me too excited too quickly. Now look at this. We're depressed because we're saturating ourselves in loss and disappointment and grief instead of saturating ourselves in gain. Jesus said, whatever you lose in this life, I'll give you in this life and the next life. He said, you have eternal gain. Sometimes you're looking at your temporal loss. How would your life change if you knew that you were in a position to gain? Jesus even says this, if you lose your life, you will find your life. And so you got to saturate yourself and soak in the gain. Because somebody said, I may take some L's this year, but my story's going to end in gain. I might be in the red right now, but my story's going to end in black because God is able I might have lost some friends, but I got some friends coming because God is able. I'm going to end in gain. Yeah, yeah. Some of us, we absorb in the wrong thing. And we don't realize God wants us to absorb so we can gain. Yeah. I start looking at all this prophetically. I don't have palm olive up here. But you got to know that your hands are anointed. And sometimes you got to meditate on your anointing day and night and watch you be like a tree because the enemy does not want to fight someone that has the anointing. What are you soaking in? What are you soaking in? What are you meditating on? What device is the enemy using? Can't you? And then, so prophetic. You, you have dawn. So, some of you are focused on the night. And things are dark. But you got to know you have a dawn coming. And the darkest hour is just before the break of day. So you got to make sure that you soak in the right thing or you'll be depressed. It's dark, it's dreary. No, I'm soaking in the dark. Jesus said, I am the light. Then he says, you're the light. But sometimes we soak in the wrong things. And we wonder why the enemy is whooping us internally because we have not soaked 
and done. I've been through some dark seasons. But the reason I was able to make it through is because I saw the light. You can walk through a tunnel as long as you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Because his word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. Some of you are soaking in the wrong thing. Songwriter said Jesus brought the sunshine. What are you saturated in? I've been through some dark places where I couldn't see my way out. But thanks be to God for shining his light from the lighthouse in my soul. See, God has even great words in the grocery store. Everywhere you go, he's trying to preach to you. And you're missing the message. You got to soak in the solution. That's the subtitle for this message. Soak in the solution. I'm soaking in the problem. That's why you're depressed, suicidal. But if you start soaking in the solution, that's why you feel helpless because you're soaking in your situation. You're in a situation ship. But if you start soaking in the solution sooner or later, or things are turning your favor. Ooh, I got to preach to you. Yeah. yeah, I know you're tired of being lonely. You going down because ain't nobody around. But, but are you going to soak in that? Yeah. Are you going to soak in the solution? And what you going to listen to? What's going to be on your playlist this Valentine's Day? Are you going to soak in the solution? This could be a great witness because we can all talk about what we don't have. What we don't have or we can celebrate what we do. Let me move. And I thought, one, two, three. Then I found four. Joy. I could just preach that. After all we've been through, we still have joy. Should have lost my mind, but I soaked in joy. Should have lost everything, but I soaked in joy. And this joy I have, and the world can't take it away. I need you to give God some praise. If you know you have unspeakable joy, be seated. Look at somebody say, I got joy. So this is the difference between the church and the world. They have happiness, but you got joy. You can be broke, busted, and disgusted and still have joy. You can be sick and still have joy. You can be single and still have joy. The only thing you need to have joy is Jesus. And as long as you got King Jesus, you don't need nobody else. I got to stop. I see y'all trying to pull me out there. I got to teach this thing. Question is, what are you saturated in? What are you soaking in? What are you soaking in? Soaking in your problem? See, here, here, here's the thing. See, you got you to gotta put the solution. It's getting all over the table. I don't even care. I just need the overflow. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. See, 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 matter can't take over the same space at the same time. So this is why God says, I don't want your joy to be a half a tank. I want your joy to be full. Because if your joy is full, nothing else can enter your heart. The Amaya says something like this, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. So how do I keep the wrong things from coming into my heart? By putting the right things. And so when the enemy 
sees that you're full. Watch this. Jesus says the enemy has tried me and found nothing in me because he was full. No vacancies. I'm all filled up. So I said, that's the reason I'm sold out. What are you saturated in? Because the best way is not to protect yourself like this. I, it slips. See, stuff gets slippery when you got solution on you. See, that's some stuff that tried to hold you. That can't hold you. When you have solution on you. Even death couldn't hold him down. He had too much solution in him. Christ is the answer. Death can't hold me because I got the solution. Sickness can't hold me because I got the solution. Low self-esteem can't hold me because I got the solution. How far somebody said, that's why I came to church because I got the solution. I got the solution. Thank you. Now, now you can't wipe the solution off me. I need this solution. Hold This is why people come to church. It's not that we don't go through. We just have a solution. See, you cry your way through. I praise my way through. I got a solution. I guess somebody said, we got the solution. That's how you defend yourself from the inside out is by filling yourself with the solution. Not the problem. Yeah, can I teach some more? The sponge is not effective dry. The sponge can't fulfill its purpose dry. Yeah, and what you soak in will determine how you see your problem. See, this sponge, this heart, looks at the dirty dishes a little differently if it has some solution on it. A dry sponge said, there's no way in the world we're going to clean all those dishes. I might as well just stay in the bag. I might as well stay in the drawer because there's no way we're going to do it. But when you've been saturated in solution, what seemed impossible now becomes possible. And so the third thing you understand about your heart, you think your heart is breaking. God sometimes will squeeze your heart so that the solution on the inside will come to the outside. And I came to prophesy somebody that God is squeezing you right now because there's something on you and in you he wants to get out of you. And so I came to preach to you on this morning. That the suffering of this present day is not worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed. Here's the revelation. The reason you're going to see glory is because you had glory on the inside of you the whole time. God just had to put you in the squeeze so the glory on the inside will get to the outside. Look at somebody say, I've got glory. There's glory behind my story. That's why I don't look like what I, I got. I can't preach like that. That's why I don't look like what I've been through because there's glory behind my This is why it pleased God to crush Jesus. Because when he crushed Jesus, the blood came streaming down. And what can wash me white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you in a squeeze right now, you got to give God some praise. Because there's more glory after this. Go ahead and prophesy to somebody. Say, there's glory after this. There's glory after this. That's glory after this. That's glory after this. Even when I could get better, I got better because that's glory after this. I bless the Lord when I'm up and when I'm down because that's glory after I can't preach like this. That's glory after this. So, so he puts you in the squeeze. He puts you in the squeeze. He puts you in the squeeze. See, for musicians like that, it's hard to teach. Uh, he puts you in the squeeze. God said, the glory you're going to experience is the glory that was in you because you're full of glory. But you wouldn't know that until you got squeezed. You find out what you're full of when the squeeze comes. Yeah. 
Jesus living on the inside can't get to the outside unless you squeeze. The solution is no good if it's not squeezed. That's what a sponge is designed for. The whole thing's temporarily so it can get out. And when your heart is a sponge and you have the solution, it changes the way you see the problem. Look at somebody say, I'm going to change the way I see the problem. I'm going to change the way I see the problem. The problem's not that big. My God is greater than the problem. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm going to change the way I see the problem because now I have the solution. I told you months ago that giants don't shrink, but they do fall. You got to soak in the solution. I've seen some big giants before, and I had to get in my prayer closet because there was enough problems around me. But I had to soak in the solution. You said no good thing when you withhold from them that walk up right. And it seemed like you've been holding out on me, God. What, what's the problem? I have to soak in the solution. And then that's when I become a tree. And it's not that my problem changed. But when I step outside of the closet, my perspective changes. And what seemed insurmountable now has to move. Because I soaked in the solution. What are you soaking in? I got to move. Because the squeeze is coming. What's in will come out. Let me give you these points and we're going home. It's trying to be done in a succinct time, but then y'all got happy with all this dishwashing liquid. I want you to go back and watch this again. And then examine your heart. Watch this. One of the ways we can guard our hearts is to worship. And there was Psalm 37 and 4 says, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So now my heart is full of his desires. I wouldn't make the right decisions. Watch this. So worship, first of all, is a shield. What's a shield from, Pastor? Worship is a shield that prevents me from being self-absorbed. The reason many of us are depressed is because we're self-absorbed. We're looking at our circumstances. We're looking at our issues. We're looking at our problems. And we're self-absorbed. Worship will shift your focus. I've come to church self-absorbed. I've been in marriage, self-absorbed. Don't you look at me funny. You've been in marriage. Self-absorbed. If you stay self-absorbed too long, you'll be out of marriage. So it's important that you're not self-absorbed because worship is a shield. And then worship is a solution again. I'm using that word again. You become solution oriented because when I fix my thoughts on Jesus, he is the solution. So now I become solution oriented because there's no other help I know. I'll look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I'm now solution oriented when I worship. If you got a problem you can't solve, you got to be solution oriented. Yeah. And the reason worship is a guard because it's sacrificial. You, you, you give up things that will hinder you long term. You surrender what already belongs to God and what he desires. Because there's some things you can't handle. So you have to give it up. To God through sacrifice. And so it's important that we understand this. Paul says, just like Jesus, that you're to present your body as a living sacrifice. That's worship. God, I can't handle it, but I'll put it in your hands. 
God, I can't preserve my life from destruction, but I'll put it in your hands. And so I turn it over to you. I sacrifice my will for your will because I believe that your will is better. I believe that your will is greater. And on today, I didn't just bring you lip service, but today I'm bringing you even a sacrifice of praise. I want you to take the next 20 seconds just to open your mouth and begin to give God the fruit of your lips. Begin to give God a sacrifice of praise. Notice what I didn't say. I didn't say a convenient praise. I said a sacrifice of praise. David said, I will offer the Lord nothing that costs me nothing. A sacrifice of praise. It means to cost me something. I won't offer the Lord that which costs me nothing. Yeah. This is costly. The alabaster box was costly. This is what guards your heart because greed will enter my heart. False sense of security will enter my heart if I don't worship him. False gods will enter my heart because watch this, the thing that he asks you for more than likely is a lowercase God. This is why he says stuff like this, you can't serve God in mammon. So he asks you for mammon. So mammon won't be your God. There's some relationships he'll ask you for because he doesn't want the relationship to be your God. And one thing he knows is that people are built to guard their God. But there's only one God that's worth guarding. And that's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The sacrifice has me to put out those things that challenge God for the throne. And if you came with the heart of worship, I want you to stretch your hands towards heaven. God moves with sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you put the wood out there, he'll send the fire. Isaac asked, where is the sacrifice? I know we're going to worship, but where's the sacrifice? And even today, somebody perhaps is here. And you say, Pastor... You know what I'm in a predicament on today? I got to be honest. That I've been running from God. I know he's been calling me, but I've been running from him. Because I have my own agenda, I have my own plans, I have my own goals, I have my own aspirations, I have my own dreams. And I've been guarding it. But, but I know I can't box with God. My arms are too short. I got to be honest, I've been stressed. I've been dealing with trauma and defeat. Life has thrown me some blows. But I realized the only way I'm going to make it is if I, if I surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so on today, I don't care who knows it. I know something's got to change in my life. I don't want to just play religion. I want a true relationship with Jesus. And so I'm going to wave my white flag on today. My metaphorical white flag. And I'm going to surrender all to Jesus. And ask him to be my Lord and Savior on today. If that's you, wherever you are, I want you to raise your hand and wave it at me. I want to see you wherever you are. Just wave it right there. I see those hands over there. Come on, you got to be honest about it. I've seen a lot of movies when they wanted to be rescued, they would wave their flag so that the person in the helicopter could see them. The person that's above them could see them. That's all I'm asking you to do, just to wave your flag on the day. And if you hear that, you say, Pastor, you know what? I had a relationship with God, but some things have gotten in the way, some things have creeped in my heart. But today I want to return my heart back to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to surrender. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand at me. Where are you? Well, you God bless you. I see those hands. God bless you. I see those hands over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Listen, I'm going to just pray for you. You can stay right there in your seats. I want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you for those that are here on today. I thank you, God, that you are mighty to save. I thank you, God, that even those that have responded to your word and your will, that they will grow in a personal relationship with you, that their life will be changed forever. That God, you would take them to heights unknown, that you would turn their life around. I pray that you would even give them a heart transplant on this day as they give their heart to you. Bless them, keep them, and preserve them until the day of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate.